Hello YouTube, my name is Sam and it's for you guys. This tutorial is another addition to my Gamer Gear Studio Physics series, and today we're going to learn about how to make gear joints. And gear joints is the last joint we're going to learn about. So gear joints is, is the last one I talk about because it because it's considered to be the most complex, but I don't really think so. The, the reason why gear joints are considered complex is because it involves using multiple joints in order to set it up, which is why I, I described it last, because we need to know the previous joints in order for this to work properly. So you need a revolute joint, and then you need another joint which is either Revolute or Prismatic. You can you can choose which one. So I actually find Prismatic to be far more complicated than Gear, but once you get Prismatic down, then a Gear really isn't that hard at all. So the way a Gear joint operates is, if you think, in, in many video games you, or in mechanics in general, you rotate a Gear to make other things happening, happen. Machinery, machinery involves a series of Gears that um, make an end result happen. One video game that I think of, when I think of ge Gears, is Ratchet and Clank, and Ratchet and Clank you you find gears throughout the world, or gears screwed into the ground, I guess, and you use, and by turning those, you make things ha happen. So it works the same here. You're, you're gonna have a gear, and, and we're gonna say prismatic joint in our case. So we have the gear maybe up here, and you can rotate that, and then we have a prismatic joint up here, over here, which is gonna work, work like a winch, it's gonna go up, up and down. So by rotating the gear, you can make this go up and down. And it also works vice versa. You can make this thing go up and down to rotate the gear. They have this system because, well, physically. There's a lot of stuff happening between the two. When you have mechanics, there's a lot of probably a lot of other gears between the two things. But all of that machinery is physics that you probably don't want to deal with. You just want to create a connection between those two. I guess that's probably the whole point of joints in general, but gears in particular. So that's all I want to talk about for this intro. Let's move on to the tutorial. All right, so let's get started. So. Like I said in the intro, it's gonna, we're going to have a revolve a revolute joint and a prismatic joint. So joints always involve two objects. Our revolute joint is going to have a circle and then our prismatic joint is going to have a square. But the other object in the equation is going to be a platform, which will remain constant. And and that way the angles remain, remain consistent between the two. So we're going to make a sprite for that platform. That's the first thing we're going to do. So SPR platform. Edit sprite. Create sprite. Transform. Resize. I'm going to make it 16 high and 256 wide. There we go. And orange is not my color palette yet. And orange has any favorite color, so I, I believe we should make it orange. Um, let's see, we'll make you a nice pretty orange. And we'll make you a darker orange. And then I'll zoom out a little bit with my grid. And I'm going to use this beveled edged thing to make it a nice Alright then, so now let's go ahead and, and work in our objects. We're going to want to create a new joint. This is our last joint, so you may or may not be sad about that. I may or may not be sad about that, actually. Joints can be a pain, especially that prismatic one. I'm not going to get over that one. And so we're going to make this our platform. Alright, and let's go ahead and start coding. Well, okay, this is going to use physics and set up our shape to be a box and we're going to go ahead and move that around to fit our box there we go now we can get started oh, oh. Let's make we're going to make it static as well we don't want it to be affected by physics we want it to just be standing there that way it'll um it'll form a nice base for for our other objects interacting okay now we're going to pull in the code and get started so before we work with the gear joint, we're going to want to uh, make our other two joints first. So the first one's going to involve a circle because, you know, it's revolving. Yeah, it seems like it will be a circle. So circle is going to be equal to instance create x, y, circle. And then we're going to make that x plus a and y plus a. So that way it'll show up on the left side of our of our platform and it'll be centered on the platform. So it'll look a little, a little nicer. And I want to start out at with the rotation of zero, so circle circle dot phi rotation equals zero. And then we can create our revolute joint physics rev uh, physics joint revolute create uh, instances ourself in the circle or world like our x. Where do you want to be anchored to? Well I want to ro rotate around the cent center of the circle, so we're gonna make that the center of the circle. So circle dot x circle Circle dot y. This works because our reference points for the circle are at the center of it. Um, lower angle limit, upper angle limit. We're not going to put any limits on the angle, so go ahead and make that false. And motors, we're not going to worry about motors now, so we'll make that false as well. Collisions, 
do we want it to work in any way? Yes, so therefore gluten equals false. Okay, so that's our revolute joint. Now, for our prismatic joint, we're going to need involve a square in that one. Square instance create. Um, let's see, where did I set it to? x plus 200, y plus 200. That, that, yeah, that ought to work. OJ square. And we also want to rotation that would be 0. Now we're going to go set up our prismatic joint physics. Joint um, prismatic create. There we go. Who do we want to interact with? Ourself and and the square. World anchors, I don't really care. I don't see how that makes a difference. World axis x. World axis y. Oh, yes, this is, this is the vector thing. Do you remember that in the previous story, which was annoying and took me a little while to figure out on my own? And we ended up using a trick using trigonometry. So theta equals 90, where we had this right here. And um, did I call it theta previously? No, I'm calling it theta now. That's um, the symbol we use for angle in um, mathematics and physics. So, so in order to figure out the vector for that, we do cosine of the angle theta, and we want to convert it over to radians because that's that's what where the theta function, how the theta function works in Game Maker, and then we for that y we do sine theta times pi divided by 180. And this case doesn't matter; we're just make it negative be proper because the y-axis is flipped in programming. I'll program it with the y-axis. Okay, lower translation limit. We're gonna look, give this infinite translation limit, so we're gonna have that section be false. Motor, don't worry about motor, also false. And then, oh geez, we're at the end. Let me just give this, make it a little more organized. Collisions, uh, true, yes, collisions. And by the way, in order for the collisions to work, remember in physics, in order for the collisions to work, we have to uh, have the collision event set up for it. Well, we can set up a new collision event for, the, for this object joint gear, or we can make this, its parent, uh, something that already has collisions. So we're going to make the parent OBJ solid, which is also a static object, so it should work pretty well. That way we won't have to worry about it being rotated or anything like that. And the only code in the object solid is in creation event, which will be overriding anyway, so it doesn't matter. So this way, the collisions will be happening. Now we got that done, we can create our revolute, revolute joint. And by the way, we're going to need to be referencing these two joints, so we're going to give them names. So we're going to call them rev, and we're going to call this one priz. Okay. So now we can go ahead and set up our gear joint. So physics joint gear create. All right. So the two instances is it's um involved with nothing new here. We want it to be the circle and the square. Notice I'm not mentioning the ourself. Ourself is uh, is an important factor both of these joints, but in terms of how the objects affect each other, it's going to be these two objects. And then our joints and those are going to be rev, and they're going to be uh, priz, because those are our two joints that we created. I believe that Game Maker checks to make sure that your, these objects you reference are actually inside these joints. As prob I imagine that's what they do, so, be so keep that in mind. And then the ratio. So the ratio is, do you move the, or if you move the, the one joint a little bit, do you move the other one the same amount? Or do you want the ratio to be different, or what? Where's to make it one? So this actually, is, I believe it's the shortest uh, fixture function we have yet. That's all there is to it. So now let's go and test it out. But first we need to add to the room of course. So we're going to go ahead and over to our room. And if you still have gravity off from the previous tutorial, you're going to want to uh, actually emphasize I still have gravity off. Yep, I still have gravity off. I thought I fixed that. Okay, 10. And we want to turn gravity back on because that's kind of important for this one. And then we're going to go ahead and add our prismatic joint over to the room. Or uh, prismatic, my bad, gear joint. There. That looks good. And then we can test it out. We'll fix that in a second. I'll fix that now, actually. So we want our gear joint to show up above circles or any other objects. So I'm going to give it a negative number. You go away. Now I'll test it out. I should get in positive, I guess. Why do you create two of them? It's interesting. What have I done to create two of them? Goes to show you that no matter how long you use this, you'll still get glitches. All right. Well, that was the weirdest thing ever. I actually delete the object, and there's still these two objects, and these the circle and square are still in the room. I I still don't know what was the problem. I ended up deleting the room, and recreating it. Hopefully, you didn't get that issue. If you did, delete the room and recreate it. All right. So here we go. If we move the gear, we rotate the gear. The box should move, and if we move the box, the gear should gear should rotate. So let us move the box. 
It's supposed to be moving right now. It really is supposed to be moving, I swear. Why is everything so much heavier? Oh, I know. I forgot to say when I created the room. Physics. I didn't change that. We had it at 1, one divided by 32, right? So, in order to convert pixels meters, you need to divide by 32. So, 1 divided by 32 is 0 0.03125. 0 0.03125. Okay. Now, this should work. Alright. So, as I was saying, move this. It, it rotates. Thank God. And there should be collisions there. That's because we made it work. Okay, that's solid. And th but then also notice that if we try to rotate this, nothing happens. Now this is not because the gear joint is working. It's because we did something with our code. Whenever I drag something, it drags it from the center, which seemed well enough. But it gives us problems here because torque is defined as, or one of the ways to define torque is the force multiplied by distance from the center. So if we apply that the force at the center every single time, there's going to be zero torque. And torque is basically rotational force, and that's what, what um, how revolute joints operate. So we need to change our coding around a little bit so that torque will be created. So what we're going to want to do is, we're going to want it the force to be applied to the place where we clicked, and not to the center of the object. So we're going to create two new variables in this obj phi object. And I could call it vpos x, the vector position x. That's the best name I can think of. So we were going to set zero to start off with because we don't, we don't really care. But what we do care is when we click on it, either for impulse or force. So for force, we're going to say v pos x is equal to, we want this to be the position relative to our current position because we want, if if the object moves, then we're going to have a problem on our hands because then the position will remain the same in the room, but not according to the object, which especially for force, that could cause problems. So we want it to be equal to mouse x minus x, the relative position. That's how far away it is from our x position. And then the other one is going to be v plus y is equal to mouse y minus y. And that's not a capital Y. There we go. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to copy this for the impulse section because that will work exactly the same. And then left button. So the force can be applied to x plus our v plus x and y minus no no plus plus yeah plus our v plus y. We'll find out if that needs plus or minus soon enough. And the same goes uh, for uh, our impulse. We're going to add on our relative position. V plus x plus v plus y. So now you can get a little bit of a feel of what it's like to apply it somewhere other than just x, y. I'm looking for the box that would cause rotation if we tried pulling it off center. But in this case, it doesn't because it, it's the way the prismatic joint works. But for now, for this one, see? We're able to create torque. Well, one thing is that if I apply it to torque here, it'll keep applying that same spot, not the point where I click on the, on the circle. We could do some more programs trig trigonometry to where it'll be the actual point on the circle and it'll change depending on how the circle rotates, but I'm not sure you'd appreciate that. So now we can rotate that just fine. Notice in the center we get like no rotation. And towards the outside we get less rotation. And then all the way on the outside we get a lot more. This is a property of torque, which I find quite interesting. This is also why it's for a door. It's much harder to to open a door from the hinges than it is to open a door on the edge. That's a physics experiment you can try in your room right now. So at the hinges will be in the center of the circle, so nothing happens. But at the outside of the door, it is on the outside of the circle. So now I learned something about torque. Now let's experiment with adding motors to these things. That's probably all you wanted, to, all you need to know. But I, I think it's fun to experiment with motors. So let's head back over to our gear over here. And right now we have gears disabled for both the prismatic and the revolute. But for the revolute, I want to enable it. So our revolute, we're going to be pulling up the the uh, square, basically. And we're going to try doing a speed of 1 or so. And with how much force? Well, how much force do we need? I think it's fun to calculate, so we're going to go ahead and calculate it. So. This is how much force it need to pull up the the square. Oh, hold up! I'm actually in the wrong spot here. I'm under angle limits. So force equals mass and acceleration. Our mass we can find by looking over here. Our density of a square is is 0.5. That means 0.5 uh, kilograms per square meter. How many square meters are there in our square? Well, it's 96 pixels wide, and the conversion from uh, pixels to meters. In order to make turn pixels in meters, you divide it by 32. We actually just set up that constant earlier. 
So 96 out of 32 is 3. So we have a 3 by 3 meter square, making giving an area of 9, meaning that its mass is 4.5 because 9 times 0.5 is 4.5. So then we multiply it by our acceleration, and we're trying to work against the acceleration of gravity, which is 10. So 4.5 times 10 is 45. So that's how much force we should apply to the torque. Okay. So let's see what happens now. It's the ground, but now nothing's happening. All that we're really doing now is we have enough force to counter the gravity. So now the force is that we're pulling up on it and the gravity pulling down on it. We're at a tie right now. No one's winning. So we need to become just a little bit stronger to beat gravity. So if I made this like a little bit stronger, 46, we should be able to beat gravity. Make me look at that Game Maker Studio. This works fine when I was testing it. Okay, let me take a look. Aha, uh -huh. I figured out my issue. So my issue is that in this direction actually does matter. So in my code, I made this like that. I didn't have negative in there. But with negative in there, this reverses the direction. This means that the positive direction is down and negative direction is up, which is accurate for in terms of Game Maker, but I'm going to need to change something here. Therefore, this is positive, meaning downwards in terms of our direction. So we want to make it negative, meaning upwards. So if I make this negative, make this 45, we should be able to cancel out gravity. See, gravity's not affecting it at all. We can't even pull it down. And if I make this 46, that should be just enough to win against gravity. See, it's going up little by little because we barely have enough to beat gravity. So that is all for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. This is actually the last tutorial that I'm going to be using this engine in. I have two more physics tutorials coming, but none of them are going to be using this engine. So one of the things, I, like I was halfway through these tutorials and I was thought to myself, you know what, I should have been adding comments this whole way through because if somebody goes through these tutorials and they come back three months from now and try to look, look at their code, they probably won't understand all. So I was sort of kicking myself over that, but then I thought, you know what, I'll just tell you guys to do it because it's, I guess it's a good solution. And because... That way I don't have to go back and re-record things, and you guys will probably learn more, more from it, because if you write down comments in your own words, explain to yourself what everything means, you'll be able to come back to it later and you'll still understand what it means. So just go through every bit of code and, and you know, just add, add little comments here and there explaining what things mean. So this would be a fixture, or whatever. And things that you think may be a little confusing later, just go through and add comments. So uh, that's what I, that's your homework for today, I guess. So other than that, that's the end of this tutorial. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I always appreciate the support, and it's very helpful to my channel. And if you didn't like it, I recommend you leave a comment, because that, that way I'll know how to improve, because I'm always in the market for improving my videos. So with that, I uh, thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. So now... Oh, I fell over. Let's see if I try to jump now. Nothing happens. That's because... If you want to do that, um, Game Maker has a function in its library that is designed to convert a sprite over to a font. So that's what we're talking about.